the Roman Empire built on the back of her soldiers. Over the 500 years from the formation of the Republic to its collapse, the Roman soldier fought against enemies from all over the continent, and over the centuries, changes affected not just the soldiers, but also the political makeup of the Republic itself. I am Lozy, and welcome to the next episode of Weapons of War, the Roman Legion. In the distant beginnings of Rome under Romulus, the army of the city was little more than a citizen militia, made up of those richest in the state. Livy gives the number of these as 3,000 peditais and 300 calerais. This force was likely the noble classes within Rome, yet the constant wars that Rome was to fight and the interactions with her neighbours showed that there was a need in the growth of the militia of Rome. Soon, the plebeians of Rome, those who were not the ruling families, were added to the army. The change in the makeup of the army was given to Servius Tullius, who had also organised Roman citizens into classes and centuries during his reign. Therefore, came five classes of the army that were distinguished from one another with wealth and therefore equipment. At the very top of the system were the Equites, who at this early time fought more as mounted infantry and not cavalry. At the bottom of the rungs were the Rahorahi, or light armed troops. The various classes in between were made up of the Principes, the Hastati, and the Trinarii. These troops were to fight in phalanx formation and fought with Greek-style weapons. This likely comes from the Roman and Etruscan interaction with the Greek colonists in the 7th and 6th century BCE. The next development of the Roman army is linked with the name Camillus. Rome had thrown off the shackles of monarchical rule by this point, and over years of war they were taking the war to the Etruscans in vain. After an eerily familiar ten year siege, the Romans were attacked by the Gauls coming through the south of Italy. The Gauls won a key victory at Alia and captured Rome, apart from the capital, with an interesting use of geese by the Romans. Camillus is seen as instrumental in leading Rome to safety in both events. Therefore, with such a legendary figure and changes in the Roman military around the same time, it is no wonder that our sources place the changes down to Camillus. And there were three major changes to speak of. Number one, pay was introduced for all soldiers. Secondly, the scutum was introduced and replaced the Greek clepius. In the 3rd century AD, a more oval version of this shield was adopted by the Roman army, and the hasta, a long spear, was replaced with a peeler, a smaller and lighter spear to be used and thrown. And the third change was the phalanx was now replaced with maniples, at a size of 60 men and in up to 120 men each. The pay was likely introduced to the, due to the long and protracted siege of Vey, while various other introductions to the Roman military had something to do with the enemies that Rome was facing. While facing the Etruscans in the north, in the southwest, and the mountains of Italy lay the Samnites. And over time, the Romans realised that a lack of mobility that the phalanx was burdened with did not help them with the rugged terrain of Samnium. Therefore, more individual ta and tactical units of maniples were much more effective, and with this change allowed the use of the throwing spear, and thus the peeler was introduced much more widely. One should also remember that these changes were not a complete and utter change overnight, and thus likely had their change over centuries and the development of the maniple likely started in the 5th century BCE. The organisation of the Roman legion, although at this time the name legion still seems a bit off, was a slight inversion of the Italian classes, with the Hastati and the Principes having their positions in the army switched. So now the Hastati were the front rank of heavily armed soldiers, and the Principes were the second. The third line was still the Triari, and they still fought with a phalanx formation and Hasta during this period too, being a final and solid line that the enemy must break to defeat the Roman army. The army remained under this chameleon structure for years, and in 264, war between Rome and Carthage broke out. Polybius, who is the major source of these wars, then goes on into great detail about the formation of the Roman army. The general size of the Roman army was four legions. These were formed and placed under command of the two consuls for that year, with two legions to each army. There was also the Socii, who were the allies of Rome, who were to give levies to the Roman army too. Therefore, the legion numbered around 4,200 Roman soldiers each, with four clear lines. The Velites were the youngest and most poorly equipped, the second rank were the Hastati, still young troops but better equipped themselves. The soldiers made up the second rank of the heavy infantry and therefore the third rank of the army, and the legion were the Principes, and at the rear was the Triarii again. The numbers of Velite, Hastati and Principes all numbered 1,200 each, with the Triarii never exceeding 600 men even if the legion was increased to 5,000 soldiers. To make up the numbers, there were around 300 cavalry deployed with the legion. 
The infantry were then broken up into 10 maniples of 2 sentries each for each line, giving the first 3 lines 30 maniples and 60 sentries. The Velites were equipped with a round shield and the Hasta Velitaris, a smaller and lighter version of the Hasta still used by the Triari at this time. The Hastati and Principes were equipped with the Pila, Scutum and various helmets with crests and best plates. The legions were also equipped with the Spanish Gladus that was adopted over the Punic Wars. At the beginning of the First Punic Wars, the Romans were unlikely to have used this weapon due to their lack of contact or rather lack of military contact with the Spanish tribes that favoured it and thus were using the longer and unpointed Gallic weapons. Yet, by the end of the Second Punic War in 201 BCE, the weapon was commonplace throughout all the legions. Also, by the time that Polybius is writing about, the Triari had finally adopted the maniple formation, and in the general formation of the legion were staggered lines of accuses to allow for an easier retreat of the forward line if so needed. However, despite this unofficial guideline in Roman military tactics, it was not always used. Perhaps the most important battle of the Second Punic War, Zama, where the tactical geniuses of Hannibal and Scipio finally faced off, Scipio did not deploy the Princopes in the gaps between the Hastati as he would be expected. However, he deployed them right behind the Hastati to allow Hannibal's elephants to rush through without harming the majority of his forces. The Macedonian Wars that started immediately after the defeat of Hannibal showed the tactical superiority of the Maniple over that of the Phalanx, and the ways of war that had conquered the East under Alexander were now obsolete. <laughs>